All right, let's talk about the fifth presidential candidate debate for the uh, Democrats. And we'll, I'm just going to go through all 10 that were on the stage today, starting off with Joe Biden. Joe Biden, uh, he's stumbles around. You kind of have to focus on what he's saying because he misspeaks and it's, it's hard to understand him. So uh, he wasn't really strong, kind of bumbled around. Uh, he had misspeak, like he'd say, people shouldn't have shouldn't have to choose, but then, oh, well, I mean, people should be able to choose regarding health care, choose my private option or, or choose the public uh, option. Towards the end of the debate, they're talking about support from the black community. So he mentioned being on the Black Caucus three times and start rattling this other stuff and then blurts out the first black senator. And first black senator, like, what are you talking about? The first black senator was in 1870. I mean, Biden's old, but he's not that old. So Cory Booker and Kamala Harris were just looking at each other and going like this. It's like, what's he talking about? But he did have a strong finish. He, he, got, he got angry. He got loud. We need to take this country back. So a uh, pretty, pretty good finish, uh, the last line of, of the whole debate. Going on to Cory Booker, uh, not a bad night. He was strong. He attacked Biden for not knowing whether or not marijuana should be illegal because that really impacts the poor communities, uh, the uh, African-American communities, my minority communities more than anybody else. And so how can you say that you're not finally against this war on drugs that has failed, uh, this marijuana, and then mention that, you know, a lot of people in Congress in Washington admit to using marijuana, but the people that get convicted and, and have a criminal record, they're never going to be in Congress. They're never going to be in Washington. You know, their lives are ruined. So it's just so ridiculous that this war and it, 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 it just keeps going on. So that was his strongest moment and, and, and a good point. Pete Buttigieg, um, not his best night. Overall, he's well-spoken, but he was attacked for using stock footage or stock photos of black people to uh, release this thing and try to get more black support. I mean, that's pretty bad. You can't even go out in your community and get some... <laughs> <laughs> Got some black people to take a picture of, of you to, to put in this document on how you're going to uh, help these help these communities. And then uh, Tulsi Gabbard uh, attacked him for something he said on Mexico, saying that he would he would uh, consider having our troops fight cartels in Mexico. And Tulsi said that was irresponsible. And his response was to attack Tulsi saying, I've heard things taken out of context, but never like that. And, and to say that anybody on the stage would, would think we should invade Mexico. And that's not what Tulsi said. And so Tulsi repeated herself. That's not what he said. You heard what I said. I said, and if you can fact check this. You were interviewed and you were asked, would you use U.S. troops to fight cartels in, in, in Mexico, and you said yes, so check out the footage yourself. So he looked uh, pretty bad on that. And then going to Tulsi, so every, you know, she's kind of the one to watch. Is she going to firebomb someone? Because everybody remembers what she did to Kamala Harris. When Kamala Harris was rising in the polls, had some good attacks on Biden early on, was rising up. Uh, in comes Tulsi and, and nukes her with this, you're, you're laughing, uh, on, on a radio program talking about how you used marijuana, but then you, a, as a prosecutor, you sent thousands of people to prison and ruined their lives over marijuana. And Kamala didn't even have a response for that. Uh, not an effective response because it, it is what it is. The records are, what are the facts are the facts. She, she can't run away from it. So Kamala Harris attacked her for being on Fox News and in, in meeting with uh, uh, Syria, uh, which, which she's constantly attacked for. So she came back, said something like Kamala doesn't, is she going to say she's going to do something different than these regime changes? Well, I think an issue Tulsi has is she talks about these regime change wars in the Middle East, and she brings up Clinton because obviously she's attacked Hillary Clinton. She brings up Bush. And she brings up Trump, but Trump pulled out of Turkey. So there isn't really, there's not all this uh, 
activity going on in the Middle East right now. So I don't know how much of a strong opinion she has attacking Trump when Trump's pulling troops out and seems to be taking the same approach as her is like all these wars have cost so much blood and money and they, they don't do our interests any good. So we should be uh, getting out. But that's what she uh, continued to platform. Some of her speeches were kind of canned. And it's kind of funny because after uh, calling Hillary Clinton, saying that she's a uh, the rot in the Democratic Party and going at it with Harris, going at it with Pete Buttigieg, and then kind of giving this canned speech smiling, I'm the person that's going to bring people together and treat everybody with respect. You know, it just, it just seemed kind of fake. I think she would be better off saying, hey, look, I love the Democratic Party, but we all know there's issues in, in the party that has to be addressed. We need to have reform in this party. And I think if she came with that approach, not just this, uh, oh, everybody has to treat each other with respect, which we, we just know isn't, isn't true. That's not really her. Um, I think that would uh, get more traction. Uh, Kamala Harris, uh, she did okay. Um, she... Her and Tulsi went back and forth a, 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 a little bit, but um, she talked uh, pretty strong on her support uh, from, from the black community and, and, and black women and uh, kind of rattled off some facts and figures about uh, how certain uh, segments are making less money uh, and, and more in poverty and, and, and that sort of thing. So I guess her night was okay. Going to Amy Klobuchar. So Amy Klobuchar keeps talking about how all these bills she passed. It's like, okay, you got all these bills passed. But from a president, we want more somebody with a real vision for this country. So I wasn't, maybe I'm just missing things, but all I all I keep hearing is, oh, I passed these bills, I passed these bills. Well, maybe you should stay in Congress then or, or the Senate because a president needs to have this strong vision for the country. So I just wasn't feeling that uh, from her. Uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, kind of lackluster, same old, nothing really new. So everything we know from Bernie from the last uh, going at it with back and forth with Clinton from the first, the second, you know, it's the same thing that the billionaires controlling everything and, and that sort of thing, nothing new. Uh, Tom Steyer was kind of weak because Joe Biden actually attacked him for his past in the coal industry and said something like, your business in coal. So apparently Tom abandoned us 10 years ago when he uh, accepted this climate change, uh, become a climate change champion, which he regurgitated a few times. But Joe Biden said something about your your company produced more coal than this, uh, than these three countries put together or something pretty effective. I mean, pretty, um, I think it was an effective attack because I really didn't know Tom's background, except that he's a billionaire and he spends so many millions of dollars just to be on these, this debate stage, which is kind of annoying. I, I don't think he should be there, but that he got all this money from coal and then he's out there about climate change. So I thought it was pretty effective attack from, from Joe Biden. Going to Elizabeth Warren, does anybody believe Elizabeth Warren? So she's up there with her same speech about, oh, if the billionaires just pay two cents, we'll have pre through K, we'll have uh, Medicare for all, we'll have uh, college colleges tuition free. And she just keeps rattling all this stuff. Does anybody believe her? It's not true. I mean, her Medicare for all plan, which she said, oh, we're not going to raise the tax on, on middle income at all. It's, it's just going to be all the billionaires that plan was something like $53 trillion over 10 years. If you took all the assets of the billionaires, it comes to something like $3 trillion. It wouldn't even cover a year. So to me, she's just she's just a liar. She's just a lying politician. Yeah, you're going to have free college tu tuition, uh, free pre through K, uh, free health care. And all we had, need to do is for billionaires to pay two cents. Is anybody believing her? Going to Andrew Yang, who's uh, my favorite candidate, because I, I believe he does have the greatest, uh, clearest vision for this country and in detailed policies to make it happen. He didn't get a lot of speaking time, which is uh, pretty, pretty normal for, for him. 
His best moment was when he was asked, so you become president and you're on the phone with Vladimir Putin, what do you say? And his response was, uh, yeah, sorry, I beat your guy, which elicited laughter. That was pretty funny. Uh, but, you know, he, he came down on Russia for election interference. He also came down on China. A lot of people don't realize this because China, the Chinese government controls their media. So it's hard to get news out of China. But there's been a lot of human rights violations against minority groups in China. And then, of course, what's going on in, in Hong Kong. So Andrew Yang was really strong on condemning these human rights violations. And I've heard some stories that are pretty uh, horrible, uh, what's happening with um, Muslim communities in, in, in China, uh, you know, even stories about uh, people disappearing and, 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 and being murdered for uh, organ donations. I mean, I haven't looked into the stories uh, too, too much, but I've seen other ones where uh, they had a town that was causing issues and they pretty much leveled the town and displaced everybody. So this is pretty much, I, I think, an established authorit authoritarian regime where you cannot criticize the government. You know, they're, and, and also, Pete Buttigieg brought this up, Andrew Yang brought, brought this up when it comes to artificial intelligence, uh, which gets into uh, media control, people control in China, but also in military technology. China is doing a lot more investment in AI than we are, and, and we need to uh, catch up uh, on, on, on that front. So overall, Andrew Ng was strong. His, his finishing his, his last minute, he said the kids are not all right, and then talked about how kids today, uh, they're not looking at, at a future that is bright as when, when we were kids, as far as the uh, opportunity, um, he did have a strong statement on the freedom dividend, talking about people paying so much for child care that, that they're like, you know, I'm, I'm working, but I hardly make anything after paying this child care. But with the freedom dividend, if you have a mother and a father in the house, that additional $2,000 a month coming in, well, then uh, maybe the mother or the father can then stay home with the kids and talked about how important it is for child development, even in early years, how much time uh, parents spend reading to their uh, children as far as development and how we are getting really behind even at, a, even at an early age. So he's pretty effective. Uh, but that last statement, I yeah, I don't know um, how people are going to pick that up if, if whether uh, or not that was strong. So that pretty much uh, covers the 10 candidates. And man, time is running out. Um, Joe Biden is still by far the front runner. Now you're hearing a lot of news about uh, Iowa and New Hampshire, the, these first uh, states as far as this primary where he doesn't have a lead, but nationally, uh, as soon as we get over those two things, uh, Joe Biden has a really big lead on everybody else. He's by far the front runner. Now, if he loses those first two, maybe he loses momentum and somebody who wins those two gains momentum. But right now, uh, looking at the numbers, he really looks like he's going to wind up being the candidate, which is kind of scary because if your campaign strategy is to stay hidden because you constantly miss, misspeak, and forget where you're at, that's that's not good, but we'll see what happens. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cisco, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. <laughs>